Hi everyone, time for another alcohol review. Uh, I thought I would do a cider this time because I've done quite a few beer reviews for the past few weeks. Uh, so we've got Old Moat Cider, passion fruit and apple flavour. And um, I got this from like a, a local corner shop type of place and I was surprised, it was, I think it was about two quid or something maybe a bit less, I can't remember but the amount they charge for a bottle of this in like a pub I always see it in these posh pubs you get it in a big massive glass with uh, ice in it the glasses are really nice but it's so expensive so I was surprised to see it in some little corner shop um, I've had the strawberry and kiwi one and it was delicious so uh, I thought I'd try this out for a video Uh, there we go, old moat cider. It says, oh, I can't, you can't get it on camera. There we go, making fruit more useful since 1947. Uh, established in Nelson, New Zealand. Oh, apparently I'm pronouncing it wrong as well. Pronouncing incorrectly since 1947. That's how you pronounce it. Old Moot Cider. Who cares? Anyway, let's try it. Yeah, if you've drank any of these um, sort of um, Swedish style ciders, I've completely forgotten what they're called. You know the ones, the pear ciders and things like that. You'll know what this tastes like. It's it's that super sweet, almost just pop rather than a cider drink, really. Um, some people will find it too sweet, like cloyingly sweet, but I actually like ciders like this. Um, yeah, it's it's okay this one. I, I prefer the one I had in a pub. The passion no uh, strawberry and kiwi flavour. Uh, I think he, I think the kiwi flavour was quite pronounced maybe it was a nice taste this is just a bit like any old pop really it's, it's, it's okay but it's not the best um, shout out to the cider ace I was watching your videos and um, that's what made me want to want to have a cider tonight I'm watching a lot of your cider reviews um, Thanks for the video you made for us. Um, <coughs> excuse me. If anyone is uh, misses the old Trump cider reviews that I used to do, because uh, my channel got shut down, a lot of people say they do, and they um, well go and go and check out Cider Ace's channel because he's re-reviewing all the Trump ciders, all the white ciders. Because the world needs shitty cider, sh shitty white ciders, reviewed on YouTube for some reason. I appreciate your your work, and uh, I hope you keep it up and do the uh, do them all. Ah. So here's to you, Mr. Cider Ace. Anyway, yeah, I said to people, uh, ask, give me topics to talk about because I can never think about what to talk about on these videos, or ask us questions like a Q and A. So here are a few of the responses. I will 
endeavour to uh, talk about these subjects. One, uh, first one on my list here Ooh. was from RPK Vids and also seconded by Anthony Taylor to talk about research chemicals. I don't really know know anything about research chemicals if I'm honest. I've, I've very little experience with them. Um, the only ones I've tried is um, I've tried loads of synthetic cannabis mixes, um, but I couldn't tell you what the chemical was in them. Um, and I've tried doves. Remember doves? I don't know if they still make them. They kept changing the chemical that was actually in doves. Um, at one point, apparently, they were really good and they were just like ease, and then they changed them to something else because that chemical got made it illegal. And that was a point where I tried them, and they were like amphetamines, and they made me really. I took them on my own in the house, and I felt really like buzzed up or whatever, but um. I couldn't actually do anything with my time, like, I was just stuck in the house, so I didn't really enjoy them that much. Um, it made us feel like I wanted to do something, but I had nothing to do. Um, so I don't know if they still make them, or what was in them. So that that's pretty much my own experience with uh, research chemicals. Um, the uh, synthetic cannabis, some company called Nature World used to send me them for free in, in return for YouTube reviews and um, I didn't mind doing them but um, I started, to, I don't know, I didn't really, I was like, I started to get sick of them and they kept sending me more and more and it was like in return for reviews and I felt like I didn't really like doing reviews in return for all this stuff they were sending me. So I just said to stop sending me stuff because I don't want to do any more reviews. Um, and then after that, I was like, I found out that it can, it can be like really addictive synthetic cannabis, and uh, it apparently can uh, give you like heart palpitations and um, people reckon it can give you cancer. So I didn't touch it again after that. Um, And then um, last year I got diagnosed with cancer so I don't know if it was a result of doing all that synthetic cannabis but um, I mean it probably wasn't but it could have could have been could have been uh, attributed or it could have um, enhanced it or I don't know I don't know what I'm saying what the word is but you know I've, uh, it's, it's a problem with research chemicals is the kind of untested so you never know if they're gonna like do something terrible to your body or whatever as I, as I avoid them now I stick to, try and stick to natural stuff as much as possible um, Justin Scott says do you like Beatles or Pink Floyd better I don't like either of them really um, for some reason, I've, I've never got into the Beatles. I think it's one of them bands that everyone keeps telling me I should like. I keep hearing about how I should like the Beatles. I see them in the Pink Floyd as well, and then when I hear them, I don't like them as much. And I think it's always a bit of a letdown compared to the hype. <coughs> um, yeah, a lot of people will hate me for saying that. I don't like the Beatles or Pink Floyd. I actually prefer. Um, Captain Beefheart was one of my favourite bands. That uh, was kind of from that era, wasn't it? I like a bit of the uh, bit of Velvet Underground as well. Um, I can't think of any other music from around then. Uh, but maybe that's it. That's all I like. I love I love Captain Beefheart stuff. Um, okay, Phil Abbott says, this was also seconded by, by Anthony Taylor, 
do you still record your dreams? A dream update would be nice. I haven't I haven't recorded my dreams for ages, and I um, forgot to go and get my dream diary to see what the last thing I wrote in it is. And um, getting it now would require going upstairs at like half one in the morning and waking my girlfriend up just to go and get a dream diary from the side of my bed. But I haven't written it for ages, and I have quite strange dreams. I always always do, but um. I haven't had anything significant to record in a in a while, so sorry, nothing nothing significant or nothing good to report there. Um, okay, Jesus Swaggy, how old were you when you first started drinking, and when did you first get drunk as fuck? Um, probably when I first started drinking was, um, actually my brother replied in the comments when I first started drinking, which is true, was um, stubby French bottles of beer, those little French bottles of beer. Um, we used to go camping, me and my family, and my dad would take along those, those a, a case of stubby beers and let me have one very rarely, occasionally just the one. Um, so that was probably about, I don't know, 12, 13 onwards. I don't know what age that was, I was quite young. Um, when I first got proper drunk, like off my face drunk, um, I was actually quite old, quite old for... Um, a, t a British teenager when this was like probably age 16 because it was the day I left I finished high school and um, me and two of my friends went um, up to his house and he lived like up a mountain and there was a pub up there where it was kind of like a local pub for local people and uh, they would serve us beer in there so um, I got absolutely hammered, fucking off my face, and um, then we had to go up the mountain to his house, which was at the top, and I was like crawling up the road on my hands and knees, and uh, that was all I remember really. Actually, it was three of our friends because I remember there was another guy there, and. Um, yeah, he got a a, a a thorn in his eyeball and blamed me forevermore after that night. I don't remember any of it, but it blamed me for him getting a thorn in his eye because I fell into a, a bush and he went in after to get me and then got a thorn in his eye. I had to go to the hospital to get it taken out, but I don't remember these events, so I don't think I was to blame. But uh, that was... That was the first time I got proper drunk and I just was off my face, like I can't remember it but I just remember, you know when you have one of those nights where just little flashes of memory like that crawling up the road, middle of the road just crawling on my hands and knees. Um, there were like sheep up the mountain, I remember my friend catching the sheep, I don't know if it was on that night or another night but um, he actually managed to get a, te a, get a sheep into one of the tents that we were sleeping in. Because his family made us sleep outside in tents rather than going to the house drunk. Anyway, that was my first time getting proper drunk. Um, mm, mm, mm. My brother, Sourpuss Sammy D, says, Talk about Denmark. I hardly remember any of that shit. I don't really remember either. We used to go camping in. Not camping, sorry. We used to go on holiday to Denmark occasionally when I was a kid. Um, because I've got a, a Danish grandmother and uh, I don't remember much of it either, it was years and years ago all I remember was the food was always amazing it was all these like open sandwiches on rye bread and it was like you always had tons of food every meal it was like a big slap up feast I don't know if that was a Danish thing or just a, a, um, a welcoming grandmother thing but um, that was it and uh, I remember I got a massive collection of the. You remember the film Hook? Well, a massive collection of Hook 
trading cards because there was a shop nearby for some reason in Denmark that sold them and I would pester my dad for hook cards every day and also cards, I think this is at the same place this was also from Denmark, cards of the oh man what's that film called Prune Face and Itchy, Dick Tracy Dick Tracy the movie card, trading cards of Dick Tracy the movie which I've never seen in my life but I collected the cards of it I don't know, that's a, that's a memory I have of them and expensive ice creams if you want a fab ice lolly, it was like three times the price that it is in England. That's all I remember of Denmark. Um, okay, Mark J says, wants me to talk about my thoughts on the possibility of life on other planets and if I believe there was slash is life on Mars. Uh, I don't know about life on Mars. I think, didn't some scientists like in the 90s discover there was like some kind of um, single cell organisms on on Mars or was that on an asteroid or something I don't know if that's been discredited since but I remember when I was a kid they actually said they'd discovered life on Mars and it was these little organisms that they'd found on rocks that had come from there or something so I don't know um, as, for, as for like proper proper intelligent life on, on other planets uh, I think it, there, there must be something just because of like the the scale of the universe it's um, there's got to be uh, there's got to be some other planet out there that's got the same conditions or conditions that can support life somewhere just because surely by the by the prop probability of like the massive scale of everything there's got to be somewhere I mean we can't be the only planet that's got like the perfect distance from the su from the sun just the right amount of water or whatever to support life I don't know I'll finish my bottle Um, I don't know about whether UFO sightings are from out of outer space. Um, I've read quite a few books on the subject and my opinion is it's either something, um, some kind of phenomenon that we don't understand yet but is grounded in um, the, the, the planet Earth and its reality, some, something or something from like another dimension um, or like some kind of like hallucinatory thing that goes on um, I'm not sure there's any evidence suggest that when we see UFOs in the sky that they're actually from outer space people seem to jump to that conclusion now since a lot of uh, sci-fi movies and things came out but in the past when people saw things like that, they always thought it was like the devil or whatever like cultural thing they could attribute it to, and they would always see it as something slightly different to what we see it now. So I'm, I'm thinking it's something that people see and they can't, their their mind can't comprehend it. Like it's some kind of extra dimensional thing, and so the mind tries to make sense of it in a way that fits with their world and they fit it in with some paranormal like a uh, ghost or a UFO or something like that uh, but I don't know I don't know what what the nature of that would be um, <laughs> fish my beer but I've got two two questions left so I'll answer these uh, I do a trip of on something like mushrooms or whatever if you've got any crazy stories from Elliot Muscat. Um I did a load of trip reports on my old channel and they all got deleted so I don't know which if which ones I told and which ones I didn't. I haven't got loads of I haven't done like loads I haven't had loads of trips in my life. Only like a handful. Um <coughs> But if I'm repeating myself, I'll tell the story the first time I did mushrooms properly. 
I actually tripped off them um, was when I was at uni and it was when they still sold them in uh, in shops in head shops you could still buy them legally like fresh mushrooms and um, I'd done them a couple of times and not really felt anything but I think the second or third time I did them I started well tripping slightly not massively I, th I don't know how strong they were but um, me and my friend were just walking around the streets in the university area where we lived and um, just just talking gibberish to each other and um, the, on, the only like significant thing I can remember from the, from that night was we both stopped and looked at this rock and um, I, I looked at it and it just looked to me like a, a baby lying on its side like like a baby's head or something and my friend turned to me and goes does that look like a dead baby to you and it was like we'd had this like psychic link between us like we'd just seen the same image and it was like either we'd seen like some kind of um, spirit of the rock or or like the uh, or we'd had a link from our, our two hallucinations had linked together because we were on the same mushroom wavelength or something that was weird because we went back the next day to look at the rock um, that we'd seen and it didn't look anything like a baby there was no way we could have like just got that from like looking at it in a certain angle and you know it looked a bit like a baby's head it didn't look anything like it and uh, we'd both had it was both like you know, I'd thought it in my head and then my friend said it, so I knew it was like, you know, I, I, it wasn't like I just said it and then he'd agreed, he'd seen it as well and agreed. It was like I thought it and then he said it afterwards. It was uh, a weird one. Um, if I told that story before in my old videos, I can't remember, but there we go. Um, it wasn't like crazy trippy though. Um, it was pretty good. The only time I've proper crazy tripped off mushrooms is when I found some in the woods by me. Didn't know what they were really and got my friend, same friend again round and we just chowed them down and then we started walking around the woods and I could see animals everywhere, like every tree, like badgers coming out of the woods and every like birds flying. I don't know, but no, there's lots of animals in the woods but it was like a Disney movie or something, like everywhere. Everywhere looked like thousands of animals just running around. And then we walked out of the woods and uh, I remember trying to cross the road. Everything was like bending, wobbly. And the road in front of me was like like a sea. Like, you know, like the waves of a sea. It was like that. But the tarmac, I could actually see it rising up and bubbling like a, a churning sea. And then when we had to cross over it, it was like I was walking on, on a wobbling surface. I was like wobbling around all over the place. That was a, a crazy trip. Uh, there you go, some mushroom stories and uh, oh yeah um, there's more of a request for a different video but I thought I'd, I would address it here Mark Shepard said uh, your salvia vids were always funny could you do some of them I probably will some point in the future I just um, I don't know when probably will do some other some, some more salvia videos I've got some more homegrown stuff I've got some dried leaves and things um, so yes I probably will not on this video obviously but there you go so if anyone has any other questions or random shit you want me to talk about on the next drinking video then uh, leave them in the comments again I'll try and do my best and um, this is old malt cider. It's it's very drinkable. Um, if you don't like these sweet ciders, then you wouldn't like this at all. It's extremely sweet. It just tastes like pop. <coughs> but um, that's the kind of thing I like. And um, yeah, not as good as a passion, uh, not as good as a strawberry and kiwi, but it's it's nice enough. And yeah, went down a treat. So that's my review. Old malt cider. 4% ABV <clears throat> buy it in corner shops don't buy it in pubs unless you're going to steal a really nice glass you get it in because uh, then it'd probably be worth it but anyway, long video this
thanks for watching everyone and see you next time goodbye